Last month, my company reduced my salary, but I can't complain because I asked for it. Before I tell you why, let me ask you this. How many of you value quality relationships more than a few hundred dollars? How many of you think that life satisfaction is a better metric to aim for than your bank balance? How many of you believe that happiness is more important than money? If your answer to any of these questions is a big yes, then this video may be worth your time. Every year during my annual review, I asked my manager for a raise. But this year, I asked him instead for a 10% cut. Now, whatever reason I had behind this, the actual doing part of it wasn't easy. Any loss from the status quo is always painful. But deep inside, I knew that this was a small price to pay in return for what I would gain. Because I was trading a part of my salary to buy one of the most valuable assets in the world, time. Most of us go through life as we have all the time in the world. There was a science fiction movie released in 2011 with an amazing cast. Justin Timberlake, Cillian Murphy, Johnny Galecki, and Matt Bomber. The movie is called In Time. In the movie, a timer that counts down to death is stamped on everyone's forearm. And to know how many days you have left, you just have to turn your wrist. Now for a second, imagine if this was not fiction and you could somehow know how long you will live. Would you keep doing the things you do or would you spend your time differently? Would you still be okay sitting at a desk five days a week doing a job you hate? Would you still stand in a queue in front of a store for hours on Black Friday to save a couple of dollars? First, just because there is no real death clock stamped on our forearms doesn't mean it isn't there. Just that the clock becomes only visible when we are in our deathbed. And then we start to think, what did I do? Why did I wait so long to do the things that I always wanted to do? I didn't want to wait until then. So when I came to know that my company has a scheme where I can exchange a part of my salary for a month off, I decided to give it a try. I am in a position in life where I can pursue this without making huge sacrifices in my lifestyle. But I totally understand that this may not be the case for everyone. But once we get past the point of just working for our basic needs, then work is more than just survival. We work because it gives our life a much needed structure. What we have to do from the moment we wake up is clearly laid in front of us. So it is way easier to just keep doing what we have been doing instead of thinking of an alternative. And for a job well done, we get rewarded in the form of promotions or races. And that makes us addicted to our work so much that the thrill of making money exceeds the thrill of actually living. It took me some time to grasp this, but when I did, I wanted to do something about it. So I decided to trade a portion of my salary to have more time for myself. I know I will always have the potential to earn more money in the future, but I can never go back and regain the time that I lost. As the old saying goes, no one ever regrets not having spent more time in the office. Although I decided to do this, actually going through it was not easy because of one thing. We are always scared of losses and we try to avoid it by any means. So once we start making money at some level, then it's really difficult to earn less even though that difference wouldn't make much of a difference in our lives. And that was also the case with me. I couldn't be happy about my salary getting reduced. But then I did something to get around it. The work council in my office had negotiated for an 8% salary hike this year. So I timed my salary change at the same time frame as the hike so that on average I don't lose much. Still, that's a decrease, but it's something I can live with. But more than the psychological factor, there is another major reason why people can't adjust to the idea of reducing the salary for more time. We take on huge responsibilities such as student loan, house loans, etc. very early in life. And these responsibilities tie us down. When we live on rent, we can't wait to get our studio apartment. And once we own a studio, we look forward to having an apartment with an additional bedroom. And once we have a two-bedroom apartment, a house and a garden becomes a necessity. We keep raising our living standards at a faster rate than our salary hikes so that we have to take additional loans to afford these higher standards. And the whole purpose of our life comes to paying off this debt as soon as possible with every penny that we can earn. I'm not saying it's a sin to own a property and you all should leave for rent. But realize that the moment you sign that loan application, you are making sacrifices somewhere else. So even though I know economically it makes more sense to buy considering the long term and I have the means to do so, I still leave for rent. 
I value having the flexibility of investing in life experiences such as traveling more than the comfort of staying in my own place. There is no right or wrong here. It all comes down to our happiness and what we want with our life. But then, is it really worth investing in life experiences? Our life is the sum of all the positive and negative experiences that happens around us. But when we have a positive experience, we not only live it in the moment, but it also creates good memories that we can carry throughout our life. I am someone who loves to travel. And in 2017, I traveled to a part of the world where very few people have ever been, Antarctica. However, the trip was expensive and I had doubts whether it was worth spending so much money. But then, during the trip, there was a moment when I was in a small boat in the vast sea surrounded by icy mountains and then there was complete silence. The only sound I could hear was a cracking sound of faraway glaciers falling into the sea once in a while. I can't explain how good I felt at that moment. But if I close my eyes, I can still go to that small boat and feel the exact same way as I felt then. Now, after five years, I don't think or worry about the money I spent, but I can still remember and feel the goosebumps when I saw the penguins, the glaciers and the whales for the first time. I could have also taken this trip when I retire and have more money with me. But then, some experiences can only be delayed for so long before they become unavailable forever. Antarctica may not survive in its almost unspoiled state much longer due to climate change. If we hope to see the continent in its present state, we can't wait. Sad, but true. I understand, going to Antarctica may not be one of the experiences that you look forward to. But then, there is an expiry date for each and every experience in life. For example, we can't take a trip to Disneyland with our children when we are 70 years old. Technically, we can. But it won't be the same as when we do it when our children are kids. I don't think I can enjoy scuba diving as much as I do now when I am 70 years old. So for increasing our overall lifetime fulfillment, having each experience at the right age is important. And when I am in a state where I am healthy and have money, I just need to find the time to build those beautiful memories. And I believe that's the whole point of earning money, to be able to spend it on such meaningful experiences. But then, I'm also planning to use a part of this extra time to invest in something that will give me much more returns in the future. Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of our time, once said, by far the best investment you can make is in yourself. We always have work to do, bills to pay, schedules to keep, and people to care for. We spend so much time being there for our friends and families, our colleagues, our neighbors, that there is very little time left to take care of ourselves. I own a YouTube channel, write a blog, and create digital products. Every day, I get ideas to create or start something new. However, with a 9-to-5 job, it's very difficult to find enough time for other activities. So I want to take this extra time to do things that will make me a better or smarter person, more creative, more well-read or more highly skilled because I know that the skills I acquire now will pay off today or tomorrow with more returns. Just to make it clear, I am not suggesting everyone should stop worrying about money and do whatever they want. If you are struggling to put food on the table for yourself and your family, then of course that should be your number one priority. But if you have enough resources and money, if you are saving too much for your own good, if you are more in love with the paycheck that you bring home, than with the experience of being in office, then you should take time to do a status check on your life and determine what you really want to get out of it. And if that's money, then of course stay where you are. All I hope to do with this video is to make you think about life in a purposeful, deliberate manner instead of just simply doing things as we always do. If you resonate with the thoughts that I share here, then I would appreciate it if you could tag along and join the family by subscribing to the channel. Until I see you with another video, have a wonderful rest of the day and adios.